Before we begin our study of engineering mechanics, it is important to understand the meaning of certain fundamental concepts and principles, the basic quantities. Now the following four quantities are used throughout mechanics, the first of which is length. Length is needed to locate the position of a point in space and thereby describe the size of a physical system. Once a standard unit of length is defined, one can then quantitatively define distances and geometric properties of a body as multiples of the unit length. So for example, if you've got this point over here, we need the length to define its location. Next we have time. Time is conceived as a succession of events. Although the principles of statics are time independent, the quantity does play an important role in the study of dynamics, as mentioned earlier. Mass. Mass is a property of matter by which we can compare the action of one body with that of another. This property manifests itself as a gravitational attraction between two bodies and provides a quantitative measure of the resistance of matter to a change in velocity. And provides a quantitative measure of the resistance of matter to a change in velocity. Finally, force. In general, force is considered as a push or pull exerted by one body on another. So force is a push or pull. Now this interaction can occur when there is direct contact between the bodies, such as a person pushing on a wall, or it can occur through a distance when the bodies are physically separated. Now what I mean by through a distance, examples of this type of force include gravitational, electrical, magnetic forces. In any case, a force is completely characterized by its magnitude, direction, and point of application. The next fundamental concept that we need to discuss is idealizations. Models or idealizations are used in mechanics in order to simplify application of the theory. A few of the more important idealizations will now be defined. Others that are noteworthy will be discussed at points where they are needed. The first idealization is the particle. Now, a particle has a mass, but a size that can be neglected. It has a mass, but no size. That's the first idealization. For example, the size of the Earth is insignificant compared to the size of its orbit. Suppose this is the orbit, and that's the Earth. So the size of the Earth is insignificant compared to the size of its orbit. And therefore, the Earth can be modeled as a particle when studying its orbital motion. When a body is idealized as a particle, the principles of mechanics reduce to a rather simplified form since the geometry of the body will not be involved in the analysis of the problem. Otherwise, the problem will be complicated. The next idealization is a rigid body. Now, a rigid body can be considered as a combination of a large number of particles in which all the particles remain at a fixed distance from one another. And they're at a fixed distance from each other. These distances are fixed, both before and after applying the load. Now, as a result, this material property of the body that is assumed to be rigid will not have to be considered when analyzing the forces acting on the body. In most cases, the actual deformations occurring in structures, machines, mechanisms, and the like are relatively small, and the rigid body assumption is suitable for analysis. The next idealization is the concentrated force. Now a concentrated force represents the effect of a loading which is assumed to act at a point on the body. We can represent a load by a concentrated force, provided the area over which the load is applied is very small compared to the overall size of the body. So if you have a body like this, we apply a load. We can idealize this load as a concentrated force that acts on this body. 
provided that the area over which the load is applied is very small compared to the overall size of the body. An example would be the contact force between a wheel and the ground. It's another example. So the contact force between the wheel and the ground is small compared to the overall size of the wheel.